Showrunners in the last nine years, the 16 employees that spoke to Rolling Stone alleged Jimmy Fallon was very difficult to work with. Drunk in the workplace, erratic outbursts, a toxic work environment with a very high turnover rate. And yet perhaps Jimmy's biggest crime is his fake laugh. <laughs> <laughs> From a young kid who's off the fact, nah, like, it seemed like he, he's forced to laugh, he forced it to laugh and shit, forcing himself to laugh. My dreams to be on SNL to achieving that dream, to cancelled for the SNL blackface skit 20 years later, to now this, will Jimmy Fallon survive this fall? Late night television, nobody gives a f about it anymore. MSN reported a survey showing Americans placing Fallon first for late night host in 2022. So, while some might find his persona off kilter or not feeling quite authentic, on the surface, things were going well for Mr. Fallon, with an estimated net worth of 60 million. But his past and present employees allege he would shut the set down over the... Wait, they are the worst bosses I ever had in my life. They use a position to, of power to bully and treat the staff that way. The network is aware of how they treat people. Wow. All those things and they designated rooms for crying. It was a don't make eye contact kind of workplace. Two stated that Jerry Seinfeld scolded Jimmy for yelling at his set member, but Seinfeld weighed in saying the situation was overblown and twisted by the media. Plus it's hard to tell if Jerry is actually angry on set since he's always kind of like that, but it does align with the employee's story of that day in 2017. Which is always a possibility in a time of rampant cancel culture. Unfortunately for Jimmy, controversy or not, many comedians have voiced their lack of respect for what late night TV has become. It's a new strain, but it isn't the same. What is that? That's insanity. It's like he's drugged. Somebody had a meeting. I don't right. Think it's like 30 million subscribers to that video did not do very well. Really? Yeah, nobody gives a about that. That's nonsense. How do they have that many subscribers too? They probably buy them. The sheer difference between Joe Rogan's first time on Conan in 1998 to explain UFC back when audiences were scared of UFC, and what it has become now, it's almost a parody of itself. The minute you say it's in a cage, yeah. you lose people's respect. <laughs> Damn, is that Joe Rogan we're here? That's the way you can get away. <laughs> Getting a set on late night or hosting late night TV was the way to transform your career before the internet. A scene from 2012 show Louie demonstrates just how much the industry has changed in 11 years. Modern day late night is sterilized, scripted, an incredibly short and unnatural way to have a conversation. This is the greatest show on television because there is no host in late night that pretends to care the way you do. <laughs> I mean, no one captures phoniness the way you do. It's a, it's a gift. Yes. First. And this comes right after the late night Avengers, Stephen Colbert, Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, Seth Meyers and John Oliver all paid millions and millions, put out a podcast together and are at least using the funds generated from the venture to pay their unpaid crew during the current writer's strike which has no end in sight. The five of us together for uh, maybe an hour a, a day. Strike Force 5 is the name of our podcast, subscribe to it now. Spotify, or wherever else you get your podcasts. But Spotify, you Now that they're podcasting over Zoom, it'll be just like their Zoom calls during the pandemic where you can see just how badly they need a rider. Watching it <laughs> was so depressing, it put me in such a funk. That's what what, they what put subjects? Watch. But even the announcement on mainstream media channels was disliked to oblivion. Damn, bro. I'm mad it dislikes over likes, bro. But... You know, no matter how, no matter like how, no matter like if it's liked or disliked, at least people was watching it though. At least people clicking on it, bro. So, um, the dislike, if people click dislike, bro, it's not that bad. That's, that's part of YouTube, bro. It, there's a like and dislike for a reason. If you like it, if you want to click this, if you want to click the like button, you can do that. If you want to click, if you want to click the dislike bu button, you have the right to do that, you know? Further exposing the shit in public reception. Compare this to the Dick Cavett show, an interview style that allowed the guests and comedic moments to flow naturally. Is this confusing you a little bit? It is, setup? all these cameras. Don't yeah. know which one I'm supposed to be looking at. I don't do this every night, you know? No. I do, unfortunately. And one can see just how fake the interview approach by corporate media feels in its present form. You are where I'm going with this, at least. Nobody ever listens to me. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Why are you looking at me? 
Because I'm because I'm trying to think of what to say. And that is precisely why Joe Rogan likes Friedman, Andrew Huberman, Tim Dillon, all provide a free-flowing and natural conversation. Or, or I'm a, a robot that's able to generate the illusion effectively enough to facilitate a good conversation. Whether you're learning about neuroscience to optimize how you feel during the day, or laughing at Tim Dillon's rant about his auntie, it's endlessly more genuine than what Jimmy Fallon and the network skeletons produce, especially considering he's paid 16 million a year. Jared Carmichael shed some light on how they block shoot late night, block shoot meaning it's all done in one day, and Jimmy Fallon isn't even there while the comedian performs. Conversations become fake. Black shot, aka Jimmy, BRB. Because you have five minutes until you cut to commercial. He's like, like it's they'll do like ten comedians at a time, and he's not even there, and they like throw to it. The fact that comedians still go on the show and would still do it is insane to me. You never knew which Jimmy we were going to get and when he was going to throw a hissy fit. Jimmy Fallon's erratic behavior spoiled their dream of working on The Tonight Show. It's embarrassing and I feel so bad. Sorry if I embarrass you and your family and your friends. I feel so bad I can't even tell you. I did not intend to create that type of atmosphere for the show. I want the show to be fun. It should be inclusive to everybody. Fallon insisted to his colleagues per Rolling Stone. It should be the best show. <laughs> Inclusive isn't the issue here, it's turning up good Jimmy one day and drunk yelling Jimmy the next. There's no report of it being targeted at certain people. It's stated as though his behavior was- Yeah, he lit in that, in that clip, bro. He's lit. He's dead lit. was walking on eggshells, as suggested by the high turnover rate of staff and showrunners. In a statement, NBC said, We are incredibly proud of The Tonight Show, and providing a respectful working environment is a top priority. As in any workplace, we have had employees raise issues, those have been investigated, and action has been taken where appropriate. Ah, just like the late night show itself, generic corporate battle, a statement that only aimed to protect themselves legally. ChatGPT probably wrote that at this point. All the money in the world and millions would rather watch Theo Von for their comedy, and now instead of finding that and world news all in one place like we once did in late night TV with great hosts like Craig Ferguson. This might be the best chat show ever. Oh, it is. It might be. Yeah. Now people tap from comedy to heavy topics all from the YouTube homepage. People are finding their comedy and social commentary elsewhere. Anthony Jesselneck gave insight as to what it was like to write for The Tonight Show on Rogan. Did you write for Fallon? Uh-huh. It was frustrating. Mm -hmm. They didn't like, I, cause it, I started when he started Late Night with Jimmy Fallon, so I was one of the first guys there. They didn't like any of my jokes. <laughs> like it was just, it was, it was Too impossible. Mean. Shedding the insight that Jimmy would choose being liked over a risky joke. This is gonna make Jimmy unlikable. Like we just, it, it wasn't like I'd written for Jimmy Kimmel, Sarah Silverman, and like if I loved a joke, they loved it too. Uh, but with Fallon, it was not the case. You know, it was, he was, it was almost never, like he might, he, he would laugh at the joke, but he'd be like, I can't say this. I can't do it. And an overpaid host, fake body language, signs that tell the audience to applause. It screams artificial, it isn't genuine, and genuine raw conversation is what is garnering the biggest audiences in media today. It's both the insidious network corporate style of media and Jimmy's desire to be liked over being a comedian and taking a risk. Jimmy survived his blackface cancellation in 2020, apologizing for impersonating Chris Rock in 2000 on SNL, so we'll see if he's able to bounce back again or if he'll retire to his palace like the big old alleged bully Ellen DeGeneres. It's an insight into how adorned and powerful figures often treat everybody around them as disposable nothing burgers. All the whilst they themselves are just a puppet for the network head bosses, many of whom are currently screwing over the entire creative side of the industry. You know, everything's gone up, but our wages. We're all not Tom Cruise. We will not be having our jobs taken away and giving to robots. Since these hosts can't write their own material and the writer's strike is estimated to continue into 2024. A sign of an ever-shifting media space where the old guard network TV is held responsible for years of unchecked behavior and the new guard online creators while at the whims of Google or Meta or X are providing the online space with content that simply would have never made it to air any other way. And entertainment of all kinds for all viewers is greater for it. Why are you supposed to let people talk on the show? <laughs> yeah, that's the vid. Let me know what y'all think about Jimmy Fallon. Bro, me personally, bro, never watched, I never watched a full Jimmy Fallon um, show day of my life. I never watched a full, full Jimmy Fallon show. Definitely heard of him. 
heard of his name, all that, but I never um watched a Jimmy Fallon show. But if y'all have, let me know what's your favorite Jimmy Fallon episode. I'm curious. You make sure you like, comment, subscribe, you know the vibes, we're checking out you are.